Hi guys, welcome to the show. We're gonna get started here with a new series called Dive Into Drive. We're looking at Google Drive and we're gonna have a lot of fun. So get ready, get your drive on. We're gonna dive right in, here we go. So basically I've got several projects that I want to sort of speed run through with you. This is a dive right in to Google Drive. We're using Google Drive for creative work, creative and productive work. And I want to show you a few things in these this series of videos just to get you jump started as fast as possible. So let's dive right in. All right, so here we're in just my Google Drive home folder. It's just the My Drive folder. You can create folders and manage it however you want. It's basically like a virtual computer that stores files and so much more. It's got its own suite of applications built in. There's third-party things that you can link up with Google Drive and just get lots and lots of stuff done. So one of the things that I want to show you is Google Drawings, and we're going to just jump right into Google Drawings. Big power tip that I want to show you, there's a little gear icon right over here, right up here in the, the right-hand corner. And if you click on that, you can see it's Settings. And the Settings will allow you to see keyboard shortcuts. I'm gonna pop open the keyboard shortcuts and here, here they are right here. You can scroll through these. And I don't have all of these memorized, but if I did, I would be so much faster than I am right now with Google Drive. But a lot of them I've gotten accustomed to. So I know to start a new Google Drawings is Shift and D. Shift is the key that you're gonna use for the most part. And this is cross-platform, so on my uh, on my PC, which is what I'm using here, a Windows computer, it's Shift D. On my MacBook Pro, it's Shift D. Some of the other keyboard shortcuts we're going to get into as we explore and expand on this series, diving in to Google Drive. All right, so this is a Google Drawings, and you might be thinking, what the heck is this? If you've never used it before, what's this checkered pattern? The checkered pattern means it's transparent. If you want to create anything with transparency inside Google Drive, Google Drawings is the one to do it in because it allows you to have a transparent background. And what I want to show you in this, I have a little project to make. I need to make a little video card, but I want it to be mostly transparent. I want the video to show through like you see in this slide. You see how I've got this info here on the right-hand side, and you can see the video coming through here? I made this in Google Drive. You can do this too. Here's another example right over here. So this camera, I've got my information still right over here, but now I've got this camera going in this blank space right here. So this is a really, really cool thing to be able to do, and I did this in, inside Google Drive. And you save it as a PNG, and we can do that in a second. So it doesn't really matter what you create, but I wanna show you how I've created something like you see on the screen. First thing you want to do, first thing you want to do is set up your document. So I'm going to go to page settings, on a page setup, I'm going to choose custom. I'm going to choose pixels and I can put in, I want this to be a full screen HD, right? So 1920 by 1080. You can put any pixel dimension in there that you want. So I'm going to drop down my little shapes menu right up here. So follow along on the screen and you can, there's tons and tons of shapes and these shapes are actually really great. And some of these are smart shapes that give you more options after you choose them. But basically I just want like a little lower third and I'm gonna make mine pretty standard, pretty uh, safe, kind of corporate looking. Uh, and the first thing that I wanna do is just get a nice box and I'm gonna make it semi-transparent. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm just gonna use the rectangle tool and I'm just gonna click and drag to start creating a rectangle. I think a good idea for you would be to take a picture of your webcam at the position that you're going to be using it. If you're doing videos like this, okay, or any, any sort of uh, YouTube video, you can create your own lower thirds for like uh, Google Plus Hangout sessions and you can create them as PNG files and use those custom ones for yourself. So you could do sort of a corporate template and everybody makes their own off that template if you wanna do that and you can do that in Google Drawings. So I'm just gonna have this selected. This is just the sort of default color settings, fill and stroke. I'm gonna take off the stroke. It calls it an outline, I think. I'm just going to make it transparent. There's a little paint bucket tool you see right up here in the toolbar, which is the fill color. And I'm just going to make it black. I'm going to make it black. I'm going to choose black first, but then I'm going to go down here to custom. And the second slider here is your alpha, which means how transparent or how opaque it is. And if I bring this down a little bit, maybe about halfway, I'm going to click OK, and you're going to start seeing that checkered pattern through this background. So let me grab a little bit of a screenshot here of myself, and then I can show you how this actually works. 
Now I'm going to drop in my guide for my, my webcam here. And it's not quite a perfect shot, so I'm going to stretch it just a little bit just to give myself basically a guide. Now, here's some shortcut keys that you guys need to remember. This will make your life much, much easier because there's no layers panel in Google Drive, not yet anyways. So control shift down moves things to the back. You can also find that option under arrange order. So you've got all your order settings here, just like in like Microsoft Word or Publisher. You can order things front and back, right? So that's layers, what's on top, what's behind it, etc. And that's basically all you have, right? Overlapping things. Um, and so I'm going to not export this, but I'm going to use it as a guide. So I want this maybe to be a little bit, a little bit taller. And I like that semi-transparency there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert word art. Word art's cool because it acts just like a shape. So I just went to insert the insert menu, drop down to word art, and I'm going to put in just my name. So I'm going to put in, and I'm going to do all caps. And you could do whatever you want to do. So you see now it's uh, just taken on the attributes of my last selected thing. I want to make that white. I want to change its font and it pulls fonts from the Google font web font uh, repository. There's a lot of fonts for you to choose from. I'm going to choose one that I like here. That's pretty cool. Uh, this is the one I use a lot. So I'm going to use that. And then you can shrink it down. Always hold shift so you don't stretch things. If I didn't hold shift, I would, I'd be able to do stuff like this and it looks kind of weird. That's not what I want. I want to hold shift. All right, I'm gonna, you get these cool smart guides, this little red guide here that goes through here. And I like to line things up. I can use the arrows to nudge things. And I like to count. So I'm gonna make this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten from that edge. And I believe that moves in pixels of, uh, of 10 each, something like that. Anyways, so we've got Joshua Pomeroy right there. I'm gonna make it just a little bit smaller. Then I'm gonna insert another piece of word art. You could also use a text box, but I like the word art for stuff like this. It's much more manageable, just like a shape. You can pick it up, you can stretch it out, make it bigger, hold shift, keep the proportions though. So I'm gonna use word art again, and I'm gonna go put a little bit of a title underneath this. I'm gonna put artist. I'm gonna make it all caps as well. So I'm just gonna do caps lock. Artist, I'm gonna use slashes here. Illustrator, artist, illustrator, designer, and that's good. That's good enough. You can put whatever you want in there. And I'm I'm gonna make this. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. what's the other one that I use? Montserrat. Montserrat. Okay, that's what I like. Put this down. Actually, I might make this Proxima Nova. It's a pretty close. Pretty much the same thing. Okay. And I'm going to bring it and put this underneath and I'm going to line it up just like that. And if it's not quite aligned, you can go under the arrange tools. You can align things. I want to align this uh, horizontally left so that it's, it's lined up. And I'm going to make the a little bit smaller still so that that's a little bit smaller. And then use my nudging again. Now you can align things with the smart guides even if you have multiple things selected, and you can select multiple things by holding down the shift key. So we're going to do that, and then I'm going to just wait till I see that red smart guide. It snaps it right there. That's where I want it. And I'm going to make that title a little bit of different color. Make it, maybe make it bold as well. Yeah, I like that bold. And I'm going to make it um, pink. Okay, I like that. I like that bright color. And this semi-transparent black bar really gives me the contrast that I need to be able to read this. If this was any lighter, for example, if I start, let's take this uh, black bar off here and under the image options here, I can start giving this video some, some brightness. If my video would happen to be this bright, it starts getting hard to read that Joshua Pomeroy, my name right there. And as soon as I put the black bar on this, it gives me enough contrast to still be able to read that name. And so that's why these lower thirds, that's why I put, I like to put this sort of semi-transparent bar underneath it. So now what I just did, you can do a, sort of like a, a click and drag selection. So I've, I'm clicking off the canvas and I'm clicking on everything that I want to select. I want, I want to have my two pieces of word art, my type selected and this bottom black bar, but I'm, you, you see the, blue line that highlights everything. I also, I also have 
the background image selected. I'm just going to hold shift and deselect that one thing. Then I'm going to hold uh, control, alt, and push G. That's how you group things. That's the shortcut key for grouping. Control, alt, G. Command, alt, G on Mac. Whew. Okay, so now I have this in a group. This really helps. Again, this is how I manage layers without having a layers panel. Let's reset our background image there. And that's pretty good. That's that's what I like. If I wanted to put in like a logo or something else, maybe I'll, I'll get my JP here. Uh, so let's go into my JP folder here. I'll grab my little JP icon. By the way, you can copy shapes and objects and images from other Google Drawings, other uh, Google Drive applications into other ones in different tabs. So it's really, really great. Basically, it just makes your entire web browser like your own creative suite. So I'm going to paste that in, and I, I do want it over in this corner right over here. And I counted to 10 when I nudged it over, so I'm going to do that as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that should be the same distance as that one is. And then I'm going to group that as well with this whole bottom bar. So I've got this nice branding here going on. Let me make sure you can see all of this. So there's my lower third. I really like that. And that's what I'm going to use. Uh, maybe maybe, I'll, maybe you'll see this in the, in the future. So what I'm going to do is, now you can either just drag this background image off the canvas and export that as a PNG. It will only export what's actually on the canvas. Or you can just get rid of it with the backspace or delete key. Now I'm going to save this as a PNG, but first I'm going to give it a name. And I'm just going to call this JP Lower Third pink because I've got a pink color in there. Okay, you can call it whatever you want to call it. Then I'm going to go to file, download as PNG image. But I also want to show you a really cool power shortcut for doing all kinds of things in Google Drive. And it's the alt and the, um, is it forward slash? The one that's on the uh, question mark key. Alt and the question mark key. So it's basically your help menu, it's your search menu, right? And it even shows there, alt plus the forward slash. And uh, this makes it really, really fast to be able to do things like, hey, I'm ready to export this, I'm ready to download this as a PNG. Alt question mark, PNG, so just start typing in, hit enter. And just like that, I know I could have typed in JPG and then it would have been a JPEG. I could have typed in SVG and hit enter. I know it's a, uh, now it's, a, okay, you get the idea. So that, uh, that alt question mark is really, really great. I'm going to pull in my JPEG. I just pull it into a new tab to inspect it, and that looks good. Even though it's white in here, I know that that's going to be transparent because it's a PNG, and a PNG preserves transparency. All right, so to test this out, let's go into my video editor because that's most likely what I'm going to be using a lower third in or something like Google Hangouts. I'm going to test it in my video editor, which is Vegas Pro. PNGs are great. They work in After Effects. They work in Premiere Pro. They work in just about any NLE, non-linear editor, that's out there. They support the PNG file format. Okay, so just to test this out, let's grab our image that we downloaded. There's our JP lower third pink. I'm just going to drag it right into here my timeline. And you can see everything looks black now. So what I'm going to do is just grab a piece of footage or even just a picture that'll work so just grab a picture here so that you can see what footage would look like behind this and i'm going to go into my cropping feature and i'm going to match output here we go so there we have it there we have it guys there's your lower third imagine this on top of your your video of your webcam or whatever it is that you want to use to put a lower third over. And you can animate this now. You can animate this little PNG so you can make it fade in just like that. Uh, you could give it a different transition if you want. I, I often like, especially with these sort of semi-transparent lower thirds that are sort of square and clean, I like to use things like push. Um, and you can push it in all sorts of different ways. So this maybe pushing up from the bottom would look like this. See that? Pretty cool, pretty cool. So you're gonna have that pop in whenever you want. Pop in and let's make it pop out. Push down, I'm gonna push it down. There it goes. So there's your lower thirds guys, made in Google Drive. 
Test it out in Sony Vegas, but you can do this in Premiere Pro very, very easily. Add your little transitions, you're good to go. Thanks for diving in to Drive With Me. I'm your host, JP. Stay tuned for the next one. We'll dive in together. Stay tuned.